everybody. Um, today I'm going to um, go over the bioconductor package called Base Space, um, which is used for clustering um, spatial RNA seq data. So um, I just, I'm going to give a very brief intro into what spatial RNA seq data is for people that maybe don't know. Um, Essentially, it's RNA-seq data with a spatial barcode. So you have um, slides like tissue or microscope slides that have arrays on them that contain spots with um, DNA primers. And each of those spots is going to contain a, sp a special barcode in that primer. Um, so when you put your tissue on the, the array like this um, and you permeabilize it, the um, RNA in the um, in the tissue binds to these primers, um, and so therefore they are coded with this spatial barcode. And then we can, um, with with a combination of the the high resolution images we take of the tissue and the uh, sequence data, we can overlay the um, you know gene expression. Um, that we can overlay the sequence data onto images of the tissue. Um, so I'm going to uh, start with a brief introduction to a study that um, was done at Lieber um, recently, where we the first uh, round of uh, spatial RNA seq data that we collected, um, and it was on a piece of dor dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, which is um, a part of the brain that we already know contains um, six layers and some white matter. Um, so it was kind of a good test um, for um, analyzing uh, spatial RNA-seq data because we already knew there was a structure there that existed. Um, and so we had a ground truth, um, which was created by Kristen and she labeled um, the different layers based on uh, marker genes and then we, um, they tried different types of clustering to see if they could reproduce these clusters. Um, and they measured this with, the, with an adjusted RAN index, um, which is basically comparing how much like the clusters um, that we generated match the ground truth. Um, so the higher the value would be, um, the better the, the match. Um, and you can see that none of them are, are uh, perfect. So um, with all of the new spatial RNA-seq data coming out, there's a lot of interest in finding new clust clustering methods um, that, are, that produce better results. So base space, um, the way, it, what the general idea of it is that you have um, spatial uh, RNA-seq data, like what, what I just showed you, um, and you cluster it. Um, keeping in mind, the, and the clustering keeps in mind um, like the spatial aspect. And then you take, um, you take that original clustering and you divide each of the spots into um, multiple subspots. And then you do an enhanced clustering, which gives you a higher resolution. And then you can take that enhanced clustering um, convert it back into gene expression data and redo your differential expression. So how do they, um, what's the basis of analyzing um, like spatial RNA-seq data or how do you cluster it? And it basically, um, so these are two different um, platforms that generate spatial RNA-seq data. This is called spatial transcriptomics, which um, we don't use, but we've been using the, Viz the Visium um, platform and they're arranged in, the, the spots are arranged differently. So this is like a more of a square setup and then the Visium is a honeycomb. Um, so, and basically with the clustering, they have a mathematical way of just, when you're clustering, keeping track of who, well, who the neighbor spots are and um, doing a weighting such that uh, neighboring spots will be most likely in the same cluster. Um, so they do a, an initial round of, of that kind of clustering and then they um, divide the spots into subspots. 
and continue to keep um, in account the neighboring spots of the spot you're interested in. So what you end up with, um, like I said before, is sort of like an, a higher resolution um, image of the clustering. And this is a melanoma uh, tumor from uh, the original base base paper. And so it was kind of exciting because the authors of base base used um, our uh, pilot data of the DLPFC. Um, here's that manual annotation that I showed you before. And they did clustering with base base and they um, measured with the same index, the adjusted RAN index, and showed that um, it was you know, the clustering performed better than other methods of clustering. Um, so I'll walk through how you use base face. Um, and so there they divide their functions into a couple different categories. One is like the, the most important is probably um, the spatial analysis. Um, so the first uh, function is spatial preprocess, which um, is basically preprocessing the data. It will log normalize it, um, find by default the top 2,000 highly variable genes, and then calculate PCs um, or do PCA uh, reduction on that. And then it'll do um, clustering on the, the default is like top 15 PCs. And then it will do the same clustering, um, but at the subspot level with the enhanced uh, spatial clustering or spatial enhance uh, function. And then they have some visualization functions for plotting your clusters, um, as well as um, some tuning uh, for, for the model. So QTune will basically run the initial clustering algorithm with um, a varying number of, of clusters. You can decide um, the number of clusters you're interested in, and then it will plot, you make a plot of the um, pseudo log likelihood of those clusters just to, um, so you can, it can help you pick the number of clusters that you want. Um, and then for, um, they also have three different useful functions for loading the data into base space. Um, and the one that uh, I've been using is this read Visium, which is super handy. Um, so I'm gonna, I'll just walk you through the, like the analysis that I did on my uh, DLPFC samples. Um, and then I'll show you some snippets of like the vignette from base base, which is actually from a different plot. They use a spatial transcriptomics platform, um, whereas all of our data is Visium data. Um, so like I said, you use their super handy functions to just read your Visium data in. And this reads data that comes directly from, it's that the direct output of Space Ranger, and it turns it into a, an SCE object um, very easily. So ooh, that's cool. And then um, you start with your um, spatial preprocessing, um, where, like I said before, you're going to get your highly variable genes and then do PCA. Um, so this is their, from their vignette, the spatial preprocess function. Um, like I said, it was a different platform, but you can also, uh, you know, choose to not log normalize the data. You can choose a number of highly variable genes you want, and you can also use um, the number of choose the number of uh, principal components that you wanna use. Um, so then we uh, do the QTune um, function, which like I said, is going to run the clustering algorithm for a range of clusters. Um, and you can choose this range. And then D is the number of PCs. Um, and they say, you wanna choose a Q in the elbow of the plot, um, which can be kind of hard to determine because some of these plots look um, a little bit weird. Um, but I just did this um, for good measure because we know already with the um, 
DLPFC data that we're looking for approximately, like we're, we're looking for seven clusters because we have the six layers and the white matter. Um, but in the future, when we're working on like tissues that we don't really know the structure of, um, we would probably want to use this to advise the number of clusters that we want to use. Um, and yeah, so this is uh, the negative or the log likelihood, which is basically a measure of significance of like how sure you are that these clusters are distinct clusters. Um, so that as far, that's as far as I understand about this measure here. So this is again from their vignette, um, basically showing you the same thing, except it was a different platform and a different data set. Um, okay, so then you do the, the actual um, like spatial clustering. Um, again, you choose, so I chose the number of, I, clusters to be seven because we already know, you know this about the, the DLPFC tissue that we're working with. Um, and it'll do initial clustering step and then it'll do um, the spatial clustering. So keeping in mind the different neighbors for the spots and then you plot it and you know, here it looks pretty good. You can see um, this section was the white matter and then there's it looks like it does have sort of like a layer structure to it um, and then we move on and do the enhanced clustering again with the same number of clusters um, and then and then you plot it and i actually tested this out with um different numbers of of clusters um, because it wasn't really enhancing our data so much. Um, it sort of like confused things a bit more. So I tried it with 10 clusters and then with seven. And you can actually, when you go with more clusters, we could see like sort of like layers starting to form. Um, but with, yeah, with our data, it's, it's a little more confusing. Um, so I probably have to um, look into some different parameters um, of this of this process, but for their data, you know, it looks a lot better. You basically get like a, an enhanced resolution um, image um, of the clusters. Um, so yeah. Um, these are um, some of the resources, the link to the bioconductor page for base space, the GitHub, um, and then uh, the actual preprint for the package. And um, I would like to thank Leo for lending me a couple of his slides and also Lucas helped me um, with the first round of processing uh, the data for our DLPFC data. So yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Abby.